If you think you have COVID-19, assume you have COVID-19 because hospitals are just going to send you home unless you are in really rough shape. Fighting this virus is like fighting a war. They're trying to preserve their armor for the battle ahead. You don't send your health care workers who are the soldiers in, in this particular war to the front lines without protective gear. The governor gets ideas for keeping the economy alive from one of his biggest critics because he asked him. We gather small business leaders together, not too close, to discuss how they can hold on to their employees. And neighborhoods begin to fill with signs that we will get through this together. That's next. It's time to level with you, Colorado. You are not likely to get a COVID-19 test if you want one, not anytime soon at least. There just aren't enough. And if you go to the ER with mild or moderate symptoms of coronavirus, you're making the problem worse because you're just going to get sent home to ride out the virus with flu, fluids and rest. And anybody going into the ER with anything less than severe breathing problems right now is forcing hospitals to waste their protective equipment and their time, and it just exposes their staff to the virus. Here's the deal. If you have symptoms, the, the fever, the dry cough, the shortness of breath, assume you have COVID-19 and self-isolate at home. Our Chris Vanderveen collected that advice and more from the experts. You've seen the lines and all the safety gear. Perhaps you too have openly wondered, do I need a test? The message, at least from the state hospitals today, is this. If you don't need to be hospitalized, do not come to a hospital or an ER expecting to get a test. As one ER doctor told me the other day, anyone who shows up inside an ER with mild symptoms is going to get this advice. Go home, drink liquids, stay away from people as much as you can. A doctor with Centura sent me this statement this afternoon. Deciding to test only those admitted allows, quote, us to conserve valuable resources, including testing and treatments, as well as help them preserve the well-being of our clinicians. Here's the people who will get tested, according to the Colorado Hospital Association, patients in need of acute care, health care workers and first responders, and those who come to an ER with life-threatening conditions. Those with mild symptoms should first talk with a primary care provider and seek testing at a community testing site. Of course, as anyone who's watched this show regularly knows, those options are extremely limited and not well established. One more thing. There remains a critical shortage of testing supplies. One thing I heard a lot today, swabs, you know, the kind of thing doctors use to put in your mouth or nose to try to see if you have the virus. Many hospitals are running low on those in addition to things such as masks. Keep in mind, we're not at the point where hospital bed capacity is an issue. Hospitals can handle the patient load right now. The question is, what does this look like in a few weeks? For next, this is Chris Vanderveen. Colorado is seeing its first county essentially go on lockdown to prevent the spread of COVID-19. San Miguel County, Telluride, is under a shelter-in-place order until April 3rd. They're telling everybody to stay home after they saw a number of critically ill patients, and then within the last 48 hours, some kids under the age of four with symptoms of coronavirus. The county shelter-in-place order came with an announcement that they're working with a biomedical company for a first-in-the-country blood test for the virus on a county-wide scale. So everyone in San Miguel County can get a test now if they want it, and then another blood test in two weeks. So if this was HBO, I would be able to be a lot more direct in my language to tell you that this is not a hoax or a political plot or an exaggeration. In lieu of profanity, consider these non-profane and very direct words from the head of Vail Health today. Quote, it is everywhere here. We just don't have the test results to prove it. Vail Health says 50 or so confirmed cases in that community are likely thousands of cases. And the hospital is warning that its 56 beds will be overrun within weeks if people there don't stay home now. Governor Jared Polis also used some of his most direct language yet for people across our state who continue to defy the order not to gather in large groups. That responsibility is on people at the end of the day. There's not really ability to police if you're stupid and you have 30 or 40 or 80 people at your home. I mean, maybe the neighbors will complain and maybe the police will come out, but please don't be stupid. Engage in social distancing. The new guidance is no more than 10 and up. The state, your local law enforcement is not going to be everywhere and anywhere. It's not something you're trying to get away with. What you're doing is you're jeopardizing the lives of your friends and their families and their relatives. So be smart here. 
Governor Polis is rolling out a relief fund for service industry workers who are laid off or losing hours right now. Colorado's unemployment system saw a crush of another 8 to 10,000 claims today, so the state is trying to reinforce that swamped website. And the governor also officially asked the Federal Small Business Administration to open up emergency loans to Coloradans. Our Marshall Zellinger convened a virtual town hall today with some small business owners, gathering their ideas of how they might keep paychecks coming for their employees. Snooze employs over 2,000 people, and I would, the majority of them no longer are working uh, with the company. Adam Schlegel, owner of Snooze and Shook Kitchen, joined Rachel Rabin, owner of Mockery Brewing. Part time, we employ a fair share of teachers. And Andrew Feinstein, owner of Trax Nightclub and Exto, to talk about what Colorado could do to help small businesses from laying off employees, even with limited business. Anything that is a fixed cost, like property taxes, that can be deferred right now, every dollar that we don't have to spend now is a dollar that goes towards retaining managers, retaining floor staff, retaining people that can still assist us with some level of operations while we get ready to open our doors again. Feinstein sent Governor Jared Polis a message about helping with a state mandated deadline. On April 15th, business personal property taxes are due. Feinstein's idea allows smaller monthly payments. But business personal property taxes pay for local services, like your home's property tax. So it would mean less money for school districts and fire departments. But they don't spend it all the next day. That's my point. Whether it's property taxes, um, insurance, anything that I'm just obligated to pay, whether my lights are on or off, any sort of relief allows me to actually pay. Mockery Brewing has three full-time employees and six part-timers. No one's been laid off yet. So there's going to have to be some sort of small business aid in order to survive. That April 15th deadline is in state statute, and it's not clear if it would require a legislative action, and the legislature is out of session right now, or if the governor could do this himself. He has the power to suspend state law, but it's in relation to emergency response, and I don't think it's likely this situation. Mm -hmm. I, I got to be honest, Marshall, this is the first week that I have ever heard the term work share. I always mm -hmm. thought work share meant like when I got behind on writing a political story and I asked if you could finish it for me in addition to your work, but it means something completely different. And according to the Department of uh, Labor and Employment, a lot of businesses are just learning this now. It's where you can reduce the hours of an employee, still pay them, keep them on payroll, and then they can still collect a portion of unemployment, not full payment. I'm not sure. It, may, it might still equal 100 percent, partly from the business side. They have to pay at least 60 percent of the salary and unemployment somewhere between 10 and 40 percent, but it's still a have the job and get some unemployment at the same time. It's possible it may take up to a month, though. The people at uh, Department of Labor and Unemployment are, are learning this fast hmm. to process these faster now that businesses might utilize these. It's an idea that makes so much common sense that we know that the government would not be able to do it during normal times. Mm -hmm. So perhaps during COVID-19 times, they can do it. All right. Thank you, Marshall. Colorado's Democratic Senator Michael Bennett is the third member of our de delegation to Congress to come in contact with somebody who tested positive. Unlike Democratic Congressman Jason Crow and Republican Senator Cory Gardner, Bennett has decided not to self-quarantine. So Bennett was there to vote for the coronavirus aid bill today while Gardner had to miss the vote in quarantine. Today, the first member of Congress announced a positive test, Miami Republican Mario diaz Balart. An emergency room physician reached out to us asking if she could make the plea directly to you to help ease the strain on hospitals to preserve the protective equipment that they need to serve the most seriously sick. Dr. Jane Janab says if they don't have the masks and the gowns and the gloves, that puts them and you at risk. We're not prepared. Um, we're rapidly running out of the supplies that we do have. And this is before we see the massive volumes that we're anticipating we're going to see in the next two, you know, two, three, four weeks as that surge of patients starts to hit hospitals. And if you knock out a good percentage of the of the healthcare uh, workforce, then who's going to to manage those patients? Who's going to be there to save them when they need to be saved? And this again, not to be repetitive. But that's why healthcare workers are begging people who think that they have COVID not to rush to the ER for a test. You're not going to get the test. Assume that you have it. Self-isolate. Know who is at risk in your world. Get them away from you if possible. They only want you to come to the hospital if you start having breathing trouble. All right. Those are the most serious cases. And by doing so, 
Your sacrifice helps to preserve the protective equipment and tests. Governor Polis appears to be looking for ideas outside of his ideological bubble to fight the coronavirus and its impact on our economy. John Caldera, the outspoken critic of Polis who leads the Free Market Independence Institute, says that Polis reached out for his ideas. And Caldera sent back a two-page list. Among his ideas, give pharmacists the ability to prescribe medication for non-chronic conditions, suspend the Amazon tax for online orders, suspend laws that prohibit people from selling excess food to their neighbors, give parents some of the state's education funding if they are doing school at home, and let restaurants sell alcohol to go. We owe a debt of gratitude to everyone who is not able to work remotely and keeps at it in a job that keeps our society functioning. There is a whole long list, and we will try to honor them each in turn. What do you say we start with postal workers? You don't even have to be full grown to show your appreciation for the folks in these various jobs. Six-year-old named Josie decided to write a letter to her mail lady to let her know that she was thinking about her during this time. Put it in their mailbox in Longmont on Monday. Even if there's a coronavirus going around, the mayor people still um, go around giving mail to everyone. Who else do we need to give a shout out to because they are out there soldiering on in order to keep our community functioning? You know how to get in touch with me. And you know that I read each and every message. We have talked so much about how the coronavirus spreads. Let's talk about how it doesn't. So if you're not sick and you don't need to stay inside your house all the time, you need to know COVID-19 does not spread by going for a walk around your neighborhood or going for a hike. It does not spread by saying good morning to all of the people that you pass. It doesn't spread by giving them a six foot wave as you go by. COVID-19 does not spread by smiling at people when you're at the grocery store, buying your week's worth of food and leaving the rest for somebody else. It does not spread by thanking the restaurant staff when you pick up your to-go order. Scientists measure the contagiousness of viruses in something called r naught. The r naught of coronavirus is thought to be about two. Every person who has it will likely give it to two other people. Simple kindness is far, far more contagious than that. And we can keep spreading it while we keep our distance. They're stuck in quarantine like so many, but they're thousands of miles away from home in Colorado. Outside the country, isolated from family, with no way back. This is a, a terrible time where people are getting ill and passing away. It's also a really great time to build the community. And we meet some of our neighbors using this as an opportunity to weave us closer together. That's next. Welcome back. I'm Kathy Sabin. We enjoyed this last day of winter with lots of sunshine, and now it's raining in Fort Collins. It's cloudy in downtown Denver, and we are awaiting a powerful storm that will arrive on the first day of spring. 67 today, so many areas coming close to 70 degrees, but this area of low pressure approaching Colorado will set up in the southeastern corner of the state and become a closed off low. Blizzard warnings northeast and south of the metro area, they go out tomorrow morning, and that means winds are expected over 55 miles per hour in whiteout conditions east of I-25 for about five to nine inches of snow. Denver will go under a winter storm warning tomorrow. We have overnight rain that will change to snow by about 10 o'clock in the morning and become heavy and wet. Breaking tree branches, power lines may be impacted as well. This system will bring heavy wet snow throughout the day and gusty winds that will make hazardous travel for I-76 and portions of I-70 east. Mountain snow is expected as well. With the mild surface temperatures, these numbers are are impressive, but we'll see a lot of melting on these warm pavement uh, areas that we saw temperatures close to 70 today. So partly cloudy and 37 tonight, rain at midnight, changing to snow by 10 a.m. Temperatures falling into the mid 30s in the afternoon, very windy, colder, five to nine inches of snow. The storm winds down Friday. We clear out. It's chilly to end the week and then a warming trend heading into Sunday and Monday with temperatures back in the 60s by the first part of next week, Kyle. Kathy, thank you. Next time you want to complain about being cooped up at home, remember that there are Coloradans stuck overseas with no way to get home right now. Several of them who are in Peru reached out to us at Next, like Reed Mitchell, who is there doing volunteer work.
the airport was shut down, so my flight on Tuesday got canceled. Couldn't get out on Wednesday. Like, found out that we were quarantined here for 15 days, and it could be longer because we don't know if after the 31st if um, we'll be able to if quarantine will be lifted or not. Um, we can't go out for food or like we can go out for food. We can't go out for anything else. Like everywhere's closed. There are police like literally everywhere. <laughs> um, so it's a, little, it's a little scary. Like it's a lot more intense than expected. But it also has just kind of been frustrating because nobody has any answers. So Reed's hoping to get back to Colorado on April 1st, depending on what happens with the quarantine. Fortunately, she's able to stay at her host family's house longer than that if necessary. Just because we're social distancing does not mean that humanity's canceled. I think like promoting positivity and kind of staying like on track is really important. Let's talk about staying separate and together at the same time next. Can't promise you what the coming days will hold, but I can promise you next you'll find a reason for hope each day. Tonight from our Noel Brennan in Denver's West Wash Park neighborhood. When days feel like they're darkening, community still finds color. I just kind of do some fun swirlies, you know. Angela Cooper has plenty of chalk and protective yeah. gear. So I had the gloves handy, thankfully. She's welcoming neighbors in West Wash Park to help finish what she started on the sidewalk. Join in on the sidewalk chalk art, uh, grab some chalk and add to the coronavirus mandala inspired by Tibetan monks and their mandalas focusing on impermanence or make your own. There's more than one way to brighten dark days. It was me, it was my idea. Up the street, um, I was just Annie Dent set up a drop box on her front it, step. It says drop box for letters for those affected by coronavirus. She hopes to deliver her neighbors' messages to nursing homes or hospitals to start. It just shows people that somebody out there is thinking of them. I just think like getting a letter just adds a little bit of sunshine and takes like even a pause out of your day to like kind of distract you from everything that's going on. Sharing words and sidewalk art might make us think about COVID-19 in a different way. While this is an, a terrible time where people are getting ill and passing away, it's also a really great time to build the community. As dark as it feels, we must find the color. In the middle there is the little coronavirus, my chalk interpretation of it. For next, I'm Noel Brennan. You kick off our season of shout outs to the people keeping Colorado running. Next. Finally tonight, it's a sign that the kids get it. Next viewer spotted a girl in her neighborhood along Alameda, out there all day long with a sign simply reading, you are loved. So let's talk about who you wanted us to mention is loved and appreciated for working through this tough time. Truck drivers, ranchers, some of you wrote grocery store employees, sanitation workers, lab techs, pharmacy workers, city bus drivers, and just when someone wrote construction workers, nobody cares that we are at risk, somebody wrote in, thanks to the construction workers. See you next time.